Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at a rather special G Skill memory kit 3200 megahertz, 16 gigabyte kit, quad channel, DDR4, just ultimate e -peen as far as memory is concerned at the moment. But because it's ultimate e -peen, it also comes with a rather ultimate price as well. I've just had a look and they're on pre-order at Overclockers for £419. So, they better be good, haven't they? So what we're going to do is we're going to move on, have a look in the box, have a look at the RAM fans that come with them, have a talk about the performance and then get everything wrapped up in the end in a nice meaty conclusion as we normally would do. But, yeah, remote move. So, quick look at the packaging because we don't want to spend too much time messing around. It's a really beefy G-Skill box, and when I say really beefy, I mean it took an absolute mission to get into this thing. But it's really heavy duty cardboard, I mean it's not like a cheap blister pack or anything. Then you get two separate boxes inside, because it's essentially two um, dual kits. They're using the packaging that they would have used for the DDR3 stuff, basically. So we'll bin all that out of the way, and then we'll move what was inside back in. Ta -da! So we've got the actual memory sticks themselves. Hey, there we go. Right. So that's the actual stick itself. Rip jaws. I know it's the DDR4 one, but it all looks the same. As far as I'm aware, these ones are only available in black as well. They are obviously 3200 megahertz, 16. Uh, 16 uh, cast timings, we've got 16, 16, 16, 36, 1.35 volts, XMP2 ready, PC4 25600, all the normal stuff that you'd expect, we've obviously got four of them, but we do also get the uh, coolers, which I will talk about quite a bit with these, but the main points are we've got the two fans on the tops, these little rings, you could uh, unscrew and customise if you wanted to fit it in. The fans uh, LEDs are white, which I'll show you in a minute. If you have a look there, the cables come straight out the centre. Now, bear in mind this is going to be on your motherboard. You'd think that they would have had the cable up one of the ends to aid cable routing. And I think this is a bit lazy, really. I think they should have done, considering it's such a premium product. Um, uh, also, I think that the cable could have been a bit longer because you get it on the um, up around the top of your motherboard it's almost like they want it to be all hanging out the front of your case and all be horrible whereas we're because we're all grown-ups we're all going to want to have it all you know really nicely uh, cable routed and you know all messed around so it's all nice and tidy and we essentially we don't want to see the cable so having that stuck out the middle which is either going to go over your CPU block or it's just going to be out dangling near the um, uh, the, like your rear fan, your exhaust on the back of the case or whatever. It's just, it's not what I was kind of expecting really. I would have thought that, you know, for, they would have tried a bit harder with it. Uh, one of the good points is, well, I say good points, different points is you can angle these. So you can uh, essentially have it blowing in towards your CPU or away, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, but it also then does mean that there is a lot of movement on these, which I will show you in a sec. So we've got them all fitted. This is on a Rampage 5, because obviously I need to, the DDR4. Uh, and you will see that we've moved the graphics card down a bit. I will give you a slightly better angle for that in a minute. But if we zoom you in, you can't really see the cables too badly there, but they're, they are there. And literally, I've just touched that cable and you can see how flimsy that is. Now it is fitted as best as we can possibly get them, unless you go right the way down to the very bottom of the motherboard. Um, but then you can still tip them really easily by touching them. They don't grab very well at all. Um, one thing I would say is, it, it, you know, angling these, it's not like, you can see I've just moved the bottom. It's kind of, you, you're going to be forever reseating them. So it's almost like you get them fitted and then hope to forget about them and you don't have to see it again. The other cable is there. If I turn you around, you can see it's, I've cable routed it down the back. now. Many people might say, oh no, your cable rating was amazing. That is not amazing. Should be a lot tidier than that, and I could make it so much tidier than that if I like took them apart and like redid everything. But considering how easy it would have been to have had the cables come out one end, 
it's really I wouldn't particularly say that it's acceptable also from this angle you can see we've got some slight graphics card issues which if I turn it round, you can see a much better view there you can see it's hanging over the graphics card port now what I'm going to do is the uh, G skill do kind of have this fit because you can see that there's a bend on these they stick out and they do send you some flat ends to go on them and that is for this situation because a lot of motherboards don't have the slot right up against the top of the motherboard some of them they miss a slot and it would have been in here and that would have been where the first slot would have started so then this wouldn't be a problem but I'm going to get these fitted the little screw you can see the little holes and they get screwed in up here so I'm going to swap these over and then I'll talk to you a little bit more about them once these are on so they are now on and fitted we've had to put one on each end because we've got quite a long graphics card and the other we needed the other one for the clearance because the graphics card is going to come right along but one thing uh, it still looks quite close to that PCR Express slot to me so uh, I've not done this yet I'm actually going to do it uh, with you on camera uh, or rather I'm going to bring you back in and I'll give you my thoughts when we're on camera and we'll see how close that is to the back of a graphics card okay right so I do have this done so that there is a minute gap in the uh, between the, the two at the moment I can zoom you right in there is definitely a gap there you can see it but that's also something that would set off alarm bells with me so if you have a look how close that is to the back of this is a 780 tie it's not got a back plate but quite a lot of inexpensive electrical componentry there and these if I zoom you back out again so you can see what I'm doing I'm not right in the way these really aren't fitted all that well because it doesn't grab hold of any of the actual um, RAM modules or anything like that and it's it's well, as soon as you this case is obviously laid down at the moment but as soon as you stand it up it does gen eventually find its way back down I mean it's touching the PCB there now it's on there so it's one of those ones where this would make me with a, a, an expensive graphics card incredibly incredibly nervous because you know even just sat there it's going to eventually work its way down I know we've got it's against itself because we have the uh, the H100 in there at the moment but any water cooling hose any um, AIO is going to you know possibly get in the way of this um, I'm, I'm, I would not be happy fitting this the way it is at the moment I'm going to show you it lit up without the the graphics card here we'll leave it with this one in because they do look really really nice um, but it's just the classic one with RAM fans I mean I'll talk to you later on about the performance but they've, they've never really quite answered everything they normally bring more problems than they actually solve because RAM doesn't really get any hot anyway but uh, hot anyway because that's why I'm going to talk to you about it so we've covered this it does come with the extra slots but I mean this side's not too bad but this end really I would not be happy with this on the back of the graphics card um, it, there's not enough purchase on the RAM slots it doesn't fit snugly enough cables aren't very nice on them so the the RAM fans as far as I'm concerned if you want to be brave then fair enough but I would be incredibly incredibly worried about the PCB on the back of your graphics card if your graphics card is in that very first slot like the Rampage 4 uh, the Rampage 5 and this is my issue uh, my other issue with them is because I should hate them but they do actually look really really nice when they're in there and all running like that we're running uh, uh, Corsair LED fans we've got SP 120s on the top we've got the AF 140 on the back these look really nice and they're actually quite a white uh, LED as well whereas these are a little bit bluey and uh, they also light from the inside lighting outwards whereas the, these fans are lighting from the outside lighting in so they, they do look really really nice it's just uh, and the other thing is it's surprisingly considering how small they are they don't make a lot of noise normally with these things they whir and they hum and they're horrible these are probably the quietest RAM fans I've heard in a long time it's just a shame that you can't really use them because they don't fit very nicely 
the cables are all a bit woo you're risking your graphics card if your graphics card's right up close it, it's a real shame uh, G-Skill I think should give these some serious uh, work I would not recommend fitting these uh, in a rig at all personally because like I said there's too many things that, that uh, just aren't right with them um, you know I would if you're going to do it then you know that's completely up to you but if you're asking for my opinion which is why you're watching this video I would personally say avoid um, actually you know putting these in your rig we'll talk more about the memory but obviously a big part of the memory kit was these RAM fans they do come with it and they do look the gonads so I felt that it deserved the time to cover them a bit more but now we're going to go back into I'm going to take all this out I'm going to get back to testing the memory and talking to you about the memory itself. So we've got the memory in the rig now. Rampage 5 Extreme uh, 780i Matrix. The reason why it's 780i is because that's what we used in the, um, the tests previously. Uh, obviously since then the 980 has come out. There isn't a lot of difference so we've kept it the same for this one. Uh, obviously we've got the 16 gigabyte of uh, G-Skill in there and it's just in our normal motherboard test rig. So this is the CPU Z, and uh, the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the uh, bus speed, because quite strangely with this, uh, the XMP sets it at 100 bus. Uh, with the other stuff that we've done before, it's been above that, because I've not done anything below 2800 megahertz. 2800 megahertz has a 127 base clock, 3000 megahertz has a 125 base clock, the tie-in for the uh, 1000, <coughs> sorry, the tie-in for the 3200, it's actually 100, which uh, I was actually uh, uh, of the impression that anything including an above 2666 was always going to um, be a higher BCLK tie-in. So this is all news to me, but anyway, this is also going to affect uh, the graphs because when we do test memory, there are very little tests that we do that just tests the actual memory side of things very few of them at all um, so uh, if we've got ones that test a little bit of the CPU and the effects that the memory speed has on the CPU if the base clock is different then the graphs are going to be different as well because the the benchmark will respond differently it's almost like if you wanted it on Z97 you had uh, 2400 megahertz memory you could have the same overclock for that throughout with this where it's all different base clocks and different tie-ins and all that type of thing it makes things a little bit more difficult um, and as you will see with the either graph you've actually got the as would you would expect you've got everything in order top is the fastest then the next one down so we've got the um, uh, G skill rip jaws 4 3200 megahertz at the top and then you've got the two dominator platinums beneath so we got, and it's, as, like I said, it's as you would expect it, 3,200, 3,000, 2,800 megahertz. But when you look at the X264, it's the completely the opposite way around because you have the, the base clock, the highest one, the 127.2, 127.5, I think it is, is at the top, which is 2,800 megahertz. Then you've got 125 base clock in the middle and then the 100 base clock at the bottom. So you can see in that benchmark at least, uh, it's completely reversed and a little bit more CPU dependent. So people are going to be asking how much of a difference it makes with gaming. So we've got this graph here. They're all 2560 by 1440. They're all maxed out and we've arranged the graph by Tomb Raider. But that's the grey one. We've got Tomb Raider, Sleeping Dogs and Hitman. And pretty much everything in this graph responds better to the quicker memory apart from Hitman Absolution. That's the only one where there was a slight dip and you can see at the top there that it was 75.9. So we can kind of say just on this graph that we could assume that Hitman does use the CPU a little bit more. Um, but it's still quite interesting to see with even with the other two that there has been a significant increase going from 2800 megahertz up to 3200 megahertz even without the, the CPU taken into account. Right then, my little beauties, it's time for the conclusion. Uh, award first, and then we'll ch chat about it uh, as we go through, as we always do, and we've decided to give it the OC3D Performance Award. Now, it's twofold with the 3200 MHz, um, uh, and I was really impressed with, because uh, 
3200 megahertz is, is a big speed and normally when you're talking about really high end memory sometimes you have to mess around and my 5960X went straight in XMP didn't have to mess around with it so that's how we've tested it we've done it like that um, so twofold it is going to be a lot of money is expensive uh, prices vary depending on where you are but DDR4 is not cheap anyway, so the more you start pushing those speeds up, the more the money is going to increase. It's probably why they include those fans, just to try and make it seem like a better deal. So if you want the absolute balls out, utmost performance, then obviously you're going to be thinking around sort of like 3000 megahertz, 3200 megahertz anyway. The one thing I would say is don't necessarily leave your um, CPU at stock, because if you leave your CPU at stock and then you just enable XMP, you're really not going to get the best from these. To the point that with a lot of the applications and if you go and click on the link to go to the overclock 3d website and have a look at all the graphs there you'll see what i mean that because of that base clock somebody running 2800 megahertz could actually have a faster rig than you do uh, because of that base clock tie-in so what i would say is if you are going to be having these and you're obviously going to have a good cpu you're going to probably be running a really good motherboard as well because the amount of money you're spending on your memory you're probably going to be spending it in other places as well I would say to everyone, if you're considering buying this, you need to get there and overclock your CPU as well. So get there, get your CPU tied in, um, and then you know play with your multipliers. You know go about it however you feel comfortable. But a multiplier increase is really really simple. With these CPUs with decent volts, you should be looking at at least 4.4 gigahertz. And I would say that if you do that, get your 3200 megahertz tied in, you'll be absolutely laughing. Um, it's definitely not this memory time and I wouldn't say it's particularly a just kind of fit it XMP and forget about it You're not really going to be getting the best from it moving on to the fans. I don't like them I like the way they look but that's as far as it goes the actual implementation of it The fact that you've got those straight brackets so that you can fit them really close to your, your graphics card it appears to be a great idea until you realise that they don't fit properly and can slip down onto your graphics card, could easily eventually cause a short. It doesn't really take much for them to work their way down and touch the back of your graphics card. I'd, you know, if you had to do it, I'd end up with like um, insulating tape on the back of them in case they had slipped or something. It would just make me really nervous, and I'd be constantly worried about it. Um, also, when it comes to uh, the wiring on them, they just, it's, the, it's lazy. You can see that uh, whoever designed them doesn't actually really deal with high-end computers that much. They've just designed, you know, some, uh, the, you know, aesthetically looking, they look really, really nice. But it's the actual um, implementation of, like, the cables and stuff on the side. It's just pretty poor, really. And it just, they obviously don't understand how uh, anal we can be about wanting our cables hidden and not be able to see anything. It was just... It doesn't sit with me at all so there's that there's also I do have a infrared thermometer so when it came to the memory fans I thought to myself what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up mem test and leave it running overnight to see without the fans to see how warm the memory sticks get now how they got 38 degrees that was it that was the most i managed to get these up to so the actual cooling element of those ram fans is completely redundant as well you don't need them to cool your memory and it's one of the things i've always been saying people water cooling their memory and you know setting up all these fans it's actually not needed it's only ever done for aesthetics and although these do look or did look earlier because i've taken them off now although they did look the gonads the, the safety implementation, uh, uh, the safety side of it with them, you know, being able to slip and the cabling and all that type of stuff just makes it like, no, don't bother. So sadly, they've got probably some of the best looking memory coolers I've ever seen. Um, but that's as far as it goes. It's still not won me over enough to say, you know, go and use them. So if you do buy the memory kits, do yourselves a favour and put them on eBay and let some noob buy them to wreck his graphics card with or something because I really wouldn't you know suggest it for any of uh, you guys I I know I'm very old school and I know I'm very kind of uh, anal about the way stuff goes and stuff but if they had if they had fit properly and those cables had been different I probably would have taken a completely different uh, route with this and shocked you all 
but it just you know you can't get past the fact that they just you know they, they it's a bit like a supermodel they look brilliant but all right i'm going to annoy a lot of people with that but a, a stereotypical supermodel we'll put it that way we'll put it in bunny ears so it's not a blanket a stereotypical supermodel that uh, is pretty to look at, but as soon as she opens her mouth, there's just nothing going on between her ear holes. And it's pretty much the same with these. They look nice, but they just, yeah, it's just pointless. So anyway, memory, epic, performance award, memory, cooler, crap, put it in the bin, sell it to some Muppet on eBay for bloody, you know, whatever you can mug them for for it. It's definitely going to be the best thing that you've ever done is getting rid of them. Um, the only thing I will say, though, and it says, actually says on the box, that if you are a made of memory, you've got to send the memory fan back. So remember that. Um, it might be one of those ones where you're just going to have to chuck them in a flipping cupboard somewhere or something like that. But anyway, so memory epic. Absolutely, I haven't got a bad thing to say about the memory itself. That's all we need to kind of worry about, really. Performance award. It's for those of you out there that literally just strive for the absolute best. But just make sure you overclock your CPU to back it all up. If you do, you'll be more than happy. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with a G-Skill 3200 megahertz uh, DDR4 memory kit with another video for you. Out. Bing! I really need to get used to sitting that side of the camera and forgetting I can't do that and it chops me hand off. Oh, first world problems.